My guest says that the devil is in the business of hijacking our minds. As a result, Satan has an open door to keep us sick, fearful, and broken. No more. Get ready for your new normal, your heavenly normal. Next. In the presence of God, Holy Spirit is so strong here. Holy Spirit, we give you permission to take control. Take control of this show. Take control of the people viewing it at home. Take control of the studio audience. We expect miracles, genuine biblical miracles to occur. We expect your presence to overwhelm everyone viewing us right now. Now, Chad Gonzalez has operated in miracles for years, but it's dramatically increased. Chad says most believers are living in a cursed reality. Explain the difference between the cursed reality and the alternate reality. Well, the cursed reality is what is normal for the sinner. Unfortunately, that cursed reality is very normal for the believer, even though we've been redeemed from that. Jesus makes this powerful statement in John chapter 17 in his prayer. And he said, Father, he said, I pray you would sanctify them or set them apart by your, by your truth, for your word is truth. Well, the, the Greek word for truth there, it's literally the word reality. So essentially Jesus said, Father, set them apart by your reality. Well, that right there shows us there's an alternate reality in which we can live from. And then that same word is where Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, I am the truth. I'm li I am reality. So if you want to see what's truly real, look at Jesus. The problem is, is that most of us as Christians, we, we preach this great faith message and we preach these wonderful messages of victory and I'm more than a conqueror in Christ. But when it comes to our perspective, we very much still have a, a sinner's perspective, a cursed perspective. And yet we're trying to operate from heaven. It doesn't work that way. You know, it's almost like as uh, the church gets more and more seeker friendly. It, it, it gets less and less from the heavenly reality and more and more in the cursed reality. There's got to be a change. There's got to be a difference, but it, it, we're accepting what's normal for the world. Mm. And yet we, we preach and talk about how all things are possible with God, but then we look at it from a sinner's perspective as to how can this possibly happen in this natural realm? And we identify with those things. Even when it comes to the area of healing, you know, we'll preach and we talk about by the stripes of Jesus, I'm already healed. You were healed. And yet we still see ourselves as the woman with the issue of blood trying to get to Jesus to get healed. So it's like we preach you're healed for 45 minutes in the service. And then we say, now come up here and get healed. Well, which one is it? I mean, you just told me <laughs> I'm healed. Now you're telling me to come get it. It's because we still identify with the sinner and we don't identify as the one who's united with Christ. See, I'm no longer that woman trying to get to Jesus. I'm no longer the leper trying to get to Jesus. When I got born again, the healer got on the inside of me. And so I, I but we still see ourselves as separated and, and, and it doesn't work like that. I can't, I can't manifest heaven if I'm more aware of this cursed reality that's normal for the sinner. And that's where there's, there's been this real disconnect between our message of faith and yet then actually seeing results. And that's why a lot of people are frustrated. It's just not working. The message of faith is correct. Right. But because we have so much of the world in, in us, if you will, mm -hmm. rather than living out of the truth reality. Right. Uh, it's not working in our lives. That's what I hear you say. It's not working. And that's why the Apostle Paul spends so much time telling us what to do with our mind. 
You know, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, do not be conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He even makes this powerful statement in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17, 16 and 17. He said, don't be like the Gentiles who walk in the, in the vainness of their thinking. And then he makes this statement, he says, and they have their understanding darkened and they're alienated from the life of God. That, that word understanding, it literally means imagination. So what he's letting, letting us know is that the Gentiles allow their imaginations to run wild. And because of that, they're alienated from the life of God. This, this great, precious, exceedingly abundant power that's on the inside of us, that raised Jesus from the dead, that's there not only for our physical bodies, but also to be manifest in our, in our world. He's letting us know it's our imagination that's almost like the dam that allows either the life of God to flow out of us or allows the curse to flow into us. Briefly, you're talking about renewing the mind. How do we break free of this cursed reality? Well, again, Jesus, He set us free. You could say that, you know, He translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. He unplugged us from the curse, and yet with our soul, we plug back into the curse when we began to think that being sick is normal. That as I get older, you know, cancer, that's just a part of life, or, you know, losing my mind, or all of these things that the world accepts as normal. We still have that in the church. And as long as we still see like the sinner, we can be saved in our spirit. But as long as we have cursed thinking, we're still going to have cursed results. That's why a lot of people, they die on their deathbed confessing healing scriptures, because they don't see themselves from that alternate reality, the heavenly reality, heaven's perspective because we think we don't have it. We're seeing it from a sinner's perspective that I don't have it. But the heavenly perspective is I already have it. I just need to manifest it. Now, Chad receives, I'll call it what it was, a shocking revelation in Kenya from a former high-level witch doctor that catapulted him once he got this revelation and others that received this revelation into a new realm of faith for miracles. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Do you feel as if God's not listening when you pray or speaking back to you? I've been there and so have all of my guests. That's why I want you to go to SidRoth.org slash prayer to access interviews with guests who have discovered how to pray unstoppable prayers. Learn about our free prayer app called God Talk and leave a prayer request so we can pray for you. It's more than time for your breakthrough. We now return to It's Supernatural. Chad, these former witch doctors that you, you met in Kenya that are now strong believers in the Messiah, tell me some of the things you learned that I can tell you as a fact, and you'll find out in a little while, are causing, when Chad speaks in front of groups and he teaches them some of these principles, they're getting healings like popcorn. Uh, tell me what, what you learned from him. Well, I went to, to talk to these, these different guys because it was from the standpoint I knew that in one sense, they were having greater spiritual experiences than most Christians. Now, albeit it was demonic, but operating in a very real power. And, and this was a former witch doctor. And, and so I told him, I said, talk, talk to me about like meditation and the power of our words and, and healing. And, and he said, well, number one, when it comes to healing, he said, you have to understand that, that all sickness and disease is of the devil. I said, well, yeah, I understand that. It's pretty cool for a witch doctor to be saying that, a former witch doctor, we go ahead. And he said, number two, he said, uh, all disease, sickness and disease, he said, it's a spiritual thing. He said, no, we look at, you know, most people look at it as a physical thing. He said, spiritual. He says, a spiritual thing. Well, most Christians th still think it's a physical thing. He said, spiritual. And he said, that's why when people would come to us, he said, we couldn't take away the disease. He said, because Satan isn't a creator. He said, we couldn't take it away, but we would manipulate it. He said, we would change it. Like if they came to us with cancer, we would just change it to diabetes. How, how'd you like to go to a doctor like that? <laughs> <laughs> He said we would just manipulate it. 
And he said, but the third thing is, he said, this, he said, Satan cannot make a Christian sick unless a Christian gives him the authority that God gave them. Why would a Christian do that? Well, so no Christian would purposely say, hey, devil, make me sick. Nobody's right. going to do that. But what, the way Satan operates is he brings these thoughts, these ideas, and these suggestions. See, he's a deceiver. He's, he's, the, he's a liar. And so our, we have dominion over him. So the only way he can have authority is if we give it to him. He's been doing this since the Garden of Eden. This is what he did to Eve. It was great deception. And it's been going on for all these so years. So he only can operate as a counterfeit artist. That's it. That's it. He went to Eve and said, if you'll eat of this fruit, you'll become like God. But it was the great deception because she was already made in the image and likeness of God. She didn't know it. But the Bible says this. It's, a, it's an interesting statement, and I think a lot of people pass over it. It says, as she, as she was looking at that tree and she saw that that fruit would do that for her. Well, she'd been seeing the tree all the time. But in this moment, her gaze is on that tree. These thoughts and ideas and suggestions are there that if you'll do this, and she saw what happened was there was a change in her perception. There was a change in her imagination. And the thing is, is that, that faith, it's going to create what, what is conceived in your imagination. So where your imagination goes, that's where your faith is gonna go. It starts as a thought then you imagine a lot about it, mm -hmm. and if the devil has planted that thought, it'll come into being. If God has planted that thought, it'll, as you imagine it, it'll right. come into being. Is that what you Yeah, saying? I mean, we're essentially, we're, we're the prophet of our own life in one sense, and God's given us this creative ability and power. And so, you know, even Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Well, this is a soul thing. A lot of times we think it's a faith problem, but in reality, it's an imagination problem. Hmm. Because even, even when the pain, the ache, the, the symptom, the hurt comes, what does that turn into? It's a thought. Oh, all of a sudden, well, you know, I, I was having heart pains. Well, you know, my dad, he had heart disease and my grandpa had heart disease. Well, maybe that's what's going on. You know, or maybe there, there's a bump or a lump. Well, I automatically, you know, think it's cancer. You know, or I've got the sniffles. You know, used to, we th thought it was just a little cold. Now people get the sniffles or something, they think they're going to die and be in ICU. Like, it's fear-based. And it all comes with that thought, that idea, and that suggestion. And that's what Satan's doing. He's planning that. And he's, he's working to deceive us, to get us to grab a hold of that. And then with our faith, whether good or bad, you will get what you speak. You will get what you believe. So we think it's a, it's a faith problem. It's really an imagination problem. We're allowing our imagination to run wild, and it's alienating us from the life of God. And in a sense, our imagination, like, like we said, your soul, your soul is going to determine what flows through you, whether it's the life of God or whether it's the curse. We're the ones that are in control of the flow in our life. And that's where a lot of Christians, they think, well, God's holding out on me when it comes to my healing. God's holding out on this and that. But this is where this alternate reality comes into play. I already have it, but Satan's trying to tell me I don't. And that's what happened with Eve. She started working to try to get what she already had, and she lost it. And that's where Christians are today. Whew. You were telling me when that former witch doctor was a witch doctor, what he would do and the price he would pay yeah. to put his curses on people. Explain that. He said before he would put a curse on someone, he said, I would get up early, early in the morning before the sun would rise. He said, I had a chair I would take outside of my house, told everyone to leave me alone. He said, I would go to that chair and I would sit in that chair. He said, I would not leave that chair until I knew that the curse I was going to pronounce that day was going to come to pass. So he would go out there and he would meditate and use his imagination, see himself pronouncing that curse, see that curse coming to pass, whether it was on a village, you know, a town, a person, a pastor, a church. He said, I would not leave my chair until I knew it. And he said, then when the sun would come up, I'd make a covenant with the sun. And it was a powerful thing that he said. He said, I would look at the sun rising. And he'd say, I'd say to the sun, if nothing in this world can keep you from rising, nothing in this world will keep my words from coming to pass. And at that moment, I realized th these witch doctors have more faith, in a sense, than most of the Christians that I know. Because he would leave that place, and he would go out and pronounce the curse, and he wasn't going around and confessing and confessing and confessing, and, and I believe I receive, and I believe I receive, and I believe it was one time. 
because he already saw it here. It was conceived here. And then through his words, he birthed it that one time. Chad, I've wondered, what happens if a witch doctor puts a curse on a spirit-filled Christian? He told me, he said, I could only do something to a Christian if they didn't know who they were. We're, we're in a sense, dead men walking. We're dead to sin, dead to sickness, dead to disease. But this is why the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 6 and verse 11, but now you need to consider yourself to be dead to sin. See, it shows the redemptive reality is I'm dead to sin. And if I'm dead to sin, I'm dead to all of the results of sin. Sin is the, is the root. And sickness and disease, it's the fruits. Sin is the, is the source. Sickness, disease, poverty, lack, those are the byproducts. If I'm dead to the source, I'm dead to the, pro, the byproducts as well. But Paul said, even though this is a, a spiritual reality, you need to consider it to be true. Otherwise, again, you can be saved in spirit, but if you have cursed thinking, you're still going to get cursed results, even though Jesus sets you free. When we return, I want Chad to be your PT, your personal trainer, and mentor you on using your godly imagination to operate in your heavenly reality. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Call now to get Chad Gonzalez's powerful book, An Alternate Reality. See from heaven's perspective and manifest heaven on earth. Plus his three-part audio CD teaching set, The Power of Imagination, Your Doorway into the Supernatural, and his anointed 30-day devotional, Walking in the Miraculous. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9815 through Chad's powerful revelatory book, An Alternate Reality reality. See from heaven's perspective and manifest heaven on earth. You will enter a world many believers do not realize is possible. Discover a realm of living many thought was reserved only for those in Bible days. Understand how to keep Jesus as the standard and your focus. Discover not only what the alternate reality is, but also what is possible in it and how to live from it. You will also receive Chad Gonzalez's powerful life-changing 30-day devotional, Walking in the Miraculous. You will be transformed daily as Chad shares devotions designed to renew your mind. Begin to experience the powerful, victorious life God has designed for you. Discover truths that will shatter the barriers that have held you back. Be propelled into a life filled with God's manifested supernatural power. Plus, you will get Chad Gonzalez's powerful three-part audio CD teaching set, The Power of Imagination, your doorway into the supernatural. As you listen to this three-part audio CD teaching series, you will discover how your imagination will release your doorway into the supernatural. Learn how to remove the gateway where sickness and sin enters. Experience God's authority in your life. Each audio CD contains anointed prayers of activation to empower you to walk in the supernatural. Don't miss out on getting Chad Gonzalez's powerful book, An Alternate Reality. See from heaven's perspective and manifest heaven on earth. Plus his three-part audio CD teaching set, The Power of Imagination, Your Doorway into the Supernatural and his anointed 30-day devotional, Walking in the Miraculous. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9815. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9815 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Chad, now that you are mentoring believers in what you've been doing personally, you're seeing so many wonderful realities uh, that uh, because of your sanctified heavenly reality, your heavenly imagination, uh, Tell me a few things that have happened to you and others. This is one situation, like I don't get sick. I'm not saying that just to sound spiritual, I don't get sick. But there was a, a moment a few years ago, I got into fear about finances. We were, we were dealing with a, a massive building project and we needed a lot of money. And so I'm usually faith man, but for a few days I let my mind run wild. And so one night I got into the shower 
and it was about 11 o'clock at night. I get into the shower and I go to put soap in my arm and I look down and I just broke out in hives. Now, I didn't know what it was, but like I was like, is it leprosy? Like what's going on? <laughs> I've got bumps and rash all over my body and then my throat started to swell up and I was having a hard time breathing and, and swallowing. Oh. So I screamed out for my wife. I said, Lacey, Lacey, Lacey. She runs in there and she, she's getting panicked. And so uh, long story short, I fought it, but we decided to go to the emergency room. So we're, we're driving to the emergency room. Now I'm mad at myself because I realized what had taken place. I brought this on myself. I got into fear about this. And so we pull into the parking lot. Lacey's unbuckling, ready to go in. I said, stop. I said, look. I said, give me 10 minutes to practice what I preach. I was feeling condemned, really. I said, give me 10 minutes. And so she sets the timer on the phone. She's ready to get me inside. And But I grabbed my phone, opened up YouTube, put on some instrumental piano music. And so I closed my eyes, and I just began to imagine myself standing there. I just, I began to sit there and just imagine myself being in the throne. What's going on right now with you? Something spiritual is going on. That is just strong. I know that. <laughs> the presence of God uh, is strong. Yeah, I, I, now, uh, uh, there's nothing more important than what's going on right now. Because the presence of God is strong. What he says is going to happen. And the presence of God is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So, so I'm sitting there in the chair and I'm just imagining, I'm seeing myself before the throne. I'm taking John chapter 15 and verse 5 and 4, 5 and 6, I'm the vine and you are the branch. And just beginning to see his, his power and his life flowing out of him and flowing into me. I'm not trying to get healed. I'm trying to, to, to get my soul connected back to Him. And I didn't hit that 10 minute mark because within a, f a few minutes, all of a sudden, I felt my throat just, <gasps> I felt my throat open up. I was able to breathe clearly for the first time in probably about 30 minutes. I looked down, all of that mess was gone. All of it was gone. And so I looked at Lacey and said, take me home. You know, so we went home. And yet, I didn't realize at the time that like if, if you get hives, that doesn't just disappear immediately. Like sometimes it's their weeks, months. But even in that moment, I wasn't trying to get, I wasn't trying to work something. I was coming back to this place of abiding and dwelling. And and so with that happen and then the things that I, I learned there with that former witch doctor, I started using this in, in some services and healing conferences recently and doing this with people. What are you seeing? We're seeing wonderful, wonderful results. There was one woman, this was recently in Kenosha, Wisconsin. She came in in a wheelchair. She was in such pain. Now she wasn't paralyzed or anything like that, but just chronic pain, such pain she couldn't walk. And when I came up to her, I could see she was in a lot of pain. She's telling me about all the issues. And so this wasn't preconceived. It just kind of came to me. I said, look, let's use our imagination. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to see Jesus right there with you. I want you to see yourself in the throne room of God. And I want you to just take your seat at the right hand in Christ. And I want you to turn your head to the left. She's got her eyes closed. So turn your head to the left. And I want you to put your hand on God's hand. And I want you to begin to feel His power flowing out of Him and flowing into you. And then eventually she stood up all on her own. She began to walk all around the church auditorium on her own. She walked out without the wheelchair. Look, God is not a respecter of persons. We just have less than a minute left. Look in the camera and pray. Pray for healing. You're so filled with the Spirit right now, right now. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 says, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light till you experience the full revelation of the hope to which He's calling you, the wealth of God's glorious inheritance that He finds in you, His Holy One. I pray that you would continue to experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith, that your life would be an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you. Right now, just close your eyes and imagine Him standing before you and is exceeding great power, the same power that raised up Jesus from the dead, literally flowing out of your spirit and, and, and flowing into your body. 
and causing creative things to take place. I'll say this prophetically, right now there's all this madness going on in this world where people, they don't know who they are, there, there's gender identity issues, there's, there's sex change operations. I'm telling you, this is one of the creative things that's about to take place. When these people that's had these operations, they receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they come to find out who they are. Supernaturally, creative miracles are going to take place and those parts that were removed are going to supernaturally come back. God is saying, you ain't seen nothing yet. 